Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar. So there. Um, that we host um, I do every week um, here. The show is free and open to anyone to watch our live shows, which we do on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. And all the recordings are posted onto our website as well, so you can go and watch them there um, if you can't join us on Wednesday mornings. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, interviews, mini training sessions, book reviews, um, basically anything library related, we want to have it on the show. That's what we're all about here at the um, Library Commission. Um, we bring in guest speakers sometimes, and we sometimes have um, Library Commission staff. Um, this week we have just Library Commission staff um, with us. Uh, our topic this week is, well, our title is, Is it copyrighted? Can I use it? And I suppose that's the end of questions that we will get answered. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, um, by the end of this hour, you'll know if it is copyrighted and if you can use it. Um, <laughs> Sort of. Oh, <laughs> to my left we have is Michael Sowers, who is our Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And then on his left there is Laura John Johnson, who is our Continuing Education Coordinator. And um, I'm just going to hand over to you guys and um, tell us everything we need to know about copyright. All right, okay. yes, in, in, in uh, 55 minutes or less. Okay. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Well, actually, that's something um, to mention, too. If we do go, go long, just to warn you ahead of time. We um, might go a little long today. It, um, we will not be cutting off right hard at 11 a.m. Central Time um, if we're still going, if they're still talking about stuff, or if you guys still have questions that are coming in that we want to capture and answer. Um, we'll go until we're pretty much wrapped up. Um, Although we don't have all day. No, no. Because okay, this yeah. is copyright. Yeah. But, so. um, <laughs> But um, <coughs> just to let you know that if, if necessary, the session could possibly go long. Yep. If you need to leave before the end, that's fine. Um, the recording will be posted, and you can always go and watch the recording and see anything that you missed afterwards. Right. So. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get us started here. And um, for uh, everybody's benefit, I'm going to go to our next slide while I'm kind of, whoops, while I'm back up. There we go, that slide. Um, and uh, you're going to want to go to that URL because we're going to have some interactivity here, but I'm going to explain the interactivity in just a moment. Um, what we've kind of done with this presentation is we've tried to create scenarios that Laura and I have come across people asking questions about copyright. Um, we are not lawyers, so let's just that, get that completely out of the way. In fact, we're probably going to go back into the slides and put not lawyers on the title slide under our names. Um, but we do have a lot of experience dealing with these issues and uh, reading and researching a lot about these issues and people ask us questions. So, And we've attended a lot of sessions like these done by others. And uh, after a couple of them, we both kind of looked at each other and said, we need to put our money where our mouth was and do our own because yes, there are there's the law, there's also opinion, um, and I joked earlier about it depends. Um, we're going to talk about a lot about it depends. And in uh, f to kind of raise a lot of issues, we're going to be doing some polling of you in the audience. So you've got a QR code there or the URL. If you have a smartphone or if you're on a laptop and you're on a de or on a desktop, if you want to go uh, to your browser and go to NLC, dot participle, P-A-R-T-I-C-I-P-O-L-L dot com, so NLC dot participle dot com, we are going to have audience participation through this. So for every couple of slides, we're going to present you a new, with a new question, with a couple of answers, A, B, and C, sometimes A, B, C, and D, and we'll start the poll. We'll give everybody about 15 or 20 seconds to pick one of our, our choices, uh, and uh, then we'll show the results, and we'll have a little discussion about that issue. Um, so, Laura, did I miss anything in kind of the introduction here? No, I think um, this is something a little bit new, but we hope that it will be interesting to you. We thought this was a good way to deal with this particular subject, and we do want to hear from you. So, not only will you participate in the polls, please, but um, if you have questions along the way or comments, uh, by all means, uh, let us know. Krista will be watching comments and yelling out the questions as we get them. <laughs> I will interrupt as, and, as, as I feel like it. And, and in some cases, we've got a lot of scenarios here, uh, so we will kind of cut off discussion of a particular topic uh, mm -hmm. as we need to, to to be able to cover everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we're going to start out nice and basic. So A, B, C, or D, where is copyright codified? Is it A, in the U.S. Constitution, uh, B, in the United States Code, 
Uh, C, in the National Commission on New Technological Uses of Copyrighted Works Guidelines, or D, all of the above. So as you can see on our slides there, we've gotten three people to answer so far. And we're going to give everybody about 10 or 15 seconds. Are people, uh, any comments coming through about no, not yet. nine? But there we go. Just something yes. that I noticed now then, and I don't, I know you're just talking. Mm -hmm. I was listening, really. Um, so we're focusing on U.S. U.S. copyright US law, copyright. yes. I Sorry. Know that U.S. copyright law. Yes, <laughs> today was all from the right. But yes, oh. in case anyone watching, this is going to be focusing on U.S. copyright. Right. Yes, it okay. is. And so uh, we're hoping a few more of you can get to nlc.participle.com because uh, it looks like we've got nine people have answered out of 70-some people who are logged in. Um, and uh, also we'll mention here real quick as, as people are doing this, it's 89 people logged in. Um, is, um, sorry, I just lost it. Oh, we're ki most of our scenarios are kind of focusing around public libraries. Yeah. I know we got some academics and some school libraries in here. That doesn't mean none of this applies to you, but there are some kind of special circumstances that schools and academia are dealing with uh, that we probably just won't have time to get into some of those specifics. Yeah. So, okay, so we've got uh, nine answers so far. And at this point, I'm just in the interest of time, uh, let's see how people answered here. And this, these bars should fill themselves in. Those bars are supposed to tell us who voted for what. I think A, B, and D kind of. Oh, okay. There's D. little tiny lines there. Yeah. Okay, we need. Because <laughs> we have not had a lot Nobody did C. So, okay. Really, guys, we need it's, for you to vote. Oh, okay, yes. Well, there is a lot of delay. There's people are saying that it's lagging on registering the vote or sending um, a oh. comment or question. Okay, okay. okay. It's 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 still processing. It's still voting. processing. It's okay. Okay. Slow. Well, we can give it another second or two. Um, although I think I've already pressed the space bar, so um, I I don't think for this question we can get any more results to come through. Okay. So we'll well, we'll hope with the next time around that that it gets a little better. We yeah. are trying this participate poll thing out for the first time yeah. here live, so working without a net just a little bit. Um, okay. Why so are we not moving along? Where, where is now? copyright codified? Well. Okay, we're having all sorts of problems here, folks. Give us a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get to the next slide. Oh, yeah, um, we are having a problem. Oh, there's the next slide. Okay. Go ahead. The Constitution. And so this, this is about as fundamental as it gets here. It's in the Constitution that there will be copyright, and mm -hmm. this is what it says. It's one of the powers of Congress. But also? It's also in the U.S. Code. Um, title 17. Yep. And it's uh, long and complicated. <laughs> <laughs> we were reading it yesterday. <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> Just to refresh. Um, CONTU is a group that does not, those two things have the force of law. The, the Constitution and the U.S. Code obviously have the force of law. The CONTU right. guidelines yes. is a sort of a trade group that got together and tried to create some rules of thumb for librarians to use. So CONTU has kind of codified rules of thumb. It's not the law, but it's a useful, they're useful guidelines to use. And that was the point. Um, all of these things help us work with copyright today. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, Chris is watching the comments here. Some of you are, are getting an, uh, an error message on participle. We might have killed it, I, which we shouldn't have with only 80-some people. But we're, we're going to try. If participle is not working for you, go ahead and type your answer into the Q&A and go to webinar. And we'll kind of get a rough idea of where people uh, think it is. So the answer to that first question was D, all of the above. All of the above, yes. Okay. All right. So here's our next question. Is this presentation copyrighted? Yes, automatically, unless it says otherwise. Uh, no, I haven't seen a copyright symbol or statement. Or C, no governments can claim copyright. So um, go ahead. If you can get participle to work, go ahead and provide your answer there. Um, and uh, although I think we have killed participle, which, which uh, That's too makes, bad. makes yeah. our presentation a little more interesting, seeing as absolutely nobody has responded that way. Or if you can put it in your questions, we'll kind of get a rough idea of Chris is uh, making hash marks real quick here uh, to see what we can do there. So uh, A, yes, automatically, unless it says otherwise. B, no, I haven't seen a copyright symbol or statement. Or C, no, governments can't claim copyright. 
Krista, are we getting a, a kind of a rough idea there of where what what we think uh, the answer is? Mm -hmm. Most people are saying A. I've got three C's and two B's that I can see so okay. far. Okay, okay. So most people are saying A, and that would be our correct answer. Yes. Is A, yes, automatically, unless it says otherwise. And we'll go to our next slide in just a moment. Um, when it comes to B, no, I haven't seen a copyright symbol or statement. That has not been required since 1976 with the copyright revisions there. Anything pre-1976, you probably need to see one, but probably assume it's under copyright anyway. Um, and then C is kind of a trick answer. Uh, no governments can't claim copyright. The U.S. federal government cannot claim copyright. However, state governments, local governments may or may not be able to claim copyright. Uh, when I first got here to Nebraska, I asked our government documents librarian at the time, Beth, and she did some research and she's like, yes, the state of Nebraska can claim copyright on things. So um, pretty much your default answer is A. Uh, yes, it unless is. you but one, say otherwise. One of the things we did want to talk about is that people working for the government, say a, an outside um, entity that the government contracted with to write something, may in fact create a, a, create a written work or something that they can copyright. So don't assume that no government document is ever copyrighted. Some of them may in fact be depending on who so really no wrote it. Um, and it also, we ourselves cannot claim copyright because we're working for an agency and doing this under the aegis of that agency. So it would be the agency that had the copyright, not us as individuals. Okay. And give us a second here. I am trying to deal with this participle problem is actually causing problems for our slides too. So give me one second. It's making my mouse disappear. That's even nice. Mm. Uh, if I can get out of the presentation. Sorry about this, folks. This is um, I can turn off the software that's making Participle do this, but I need to be able to get out of the presentation in order to do it. And it is not Letting me do that. Okay. Extreme measures are called for. Sorry about this, folks. Okay, we've turned participle off, so please don't even try anymore, and uh, we'll we'll go with putting your your answers into the into the Q and A. Sorry yeah. about that. All right. However, there is an exception. We are licensing this uh, presentation under Creative Commons, and uh, we've done in the past Creative Commons presentations. So yes, this presentation is under copyright, but we are putting a license on top of it that says as long as you cite your source and you can reuse this for non-commercial purposes. So there can be exceptions to your default assumption of copyright, which is it is copyrighted unless otherwise stated. Still is under copyright, but we've added a Creative Commons license onto this presentation yes. so that you can reuse it. So look for something like that, and we'll come back to Creative Commons and other usage rights in an, uh, another couple of slots. Yeah. All right. So, here we go. This is always my most favorite question. We did yeah. one question. Quick uh, question, came, yes? Uh -huh. While you were doing that a minute ago. Um, uh, can we apply what you're saying to online documents as well as print? Yes. 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 Um, and in fact, so far, so far, you know, for example, this question, we are talking about images in particular. Uh, but pretty much what we're talking about is, is regardless of the medium yes. uh, that we're talking about. There are some special provisions for music, especially and for uh, video presentations, mm -hmm. but by and large, uh, general copyright rules apply to all media. Yeah, it will still be copyrighted unless otherwise yeah. stated. Okay, so I love this question. Okay, actually, uh, yes, one other stop. question. Um, the slides are still showing when you were, um, yeah, just something that's going on with the broadcast, it's not updating the oh. slides. Okay. Um, 
It's not updating. Oh. So, wow, this is going all real well. Let's stop showing screen and reshare the screen. Let's see if that works. Yep. Okay, there we go. Wow. You good? That's, that's all right. Showing. Okay. Um, is, so, is the poll still on there? Well, the, the graphics are there, but the poll okay. does not work. Okay. I have turned the poll off. That's fine. <laughs> um, I needed an image for my website, so I found a great one on Google. I can just use it, right? A, yes. B, no. C, maybe. So go ahead and pick your A, B, or C into the Q&A there. We'll give everybody a, a short period of time to provide their answer. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Coming through nice and quick. I think we're leaning towards C's this time. Leaning towards maybe. C? Okay. We like the maybe. Actually, maybe is a good answer for almost anything to do with happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly Hence. C's and a few B's mixed in. Okay, but okay. nobody said A? We haven't seen any A's? Okay, good. You didn't say A. Now, just, just to kind of start, we're going to start with no. Okay. <laughs> one A. Okay. The real answer is maybe, but I just want to stress really no in that if you answered A, that is just flat out wrong. Okay. Just because it's online doesn't mean you can use it. Now, it's very easy to use. It is very... People find me very liberal when it comes to copyright, but when I'm the person telling somebody, no, you can't do that, it's usually because somebody said, well, it's an online picture, so I can just do whatever I want with it, mainly because if they didn't want people to share it, they wouldn't have put it online. Unfortunately, that is highly incorrect. Right? Just because it's online yeah. doesn't mean you can automatically use it. No, it does not. However, that doesn't mean, no, you can't use it either. The, answer, the correct answer here is maybe. Uh, yeah. And this is where we have to bring up the concept of fair use. Okay. The, the copyright law um, has a provision that generally rights are uh, <clears throat> reserved to an author. But it makes exceptions. And the big exception is fair use. In other words, there are times when you can use things. And fair use Keep going. is defined with four characteristics and you can't it's not whether something what whether your use has any one of them it's the combination of them that matters um, the purpose and character of the new work and the big um, the big deal with fair use these days is transformativeness have you changed the the purpose or the look or the uh, have you changed the original thing and made it part of something new that was genuinely different than what it was before? That's the purpose and character of the new work. And we have an example of one of those later. Yeah. The nature of the copied work. Um, it, that's part is of it, Is it writing? Is it music? Is it yeah. a statue? Is it a photograph? Um, that, that, this one's almost kind of the most nebulous uh, yeah. of, of the considerations. Yeah. The amount and substantiality of the original work. Um, if you took an entire book, that's probably wrong, um, but if you, a paragraph, if you quoted a paragraph out of a book, you'd be fine. If you quoted, quoted a paragraph out of a one-page document, you might not be fine because that would be too big a piece of the original work. So it's not, it, it's, it's sort of what the fraction was. And sometimes if you have enough transformativeness, you can use a whole work, but sometimes you can't. And I'm sorry that that sounds really, really nebulous. We thought so too, but that's what they say. Mm -hmm. And then the effect upon the original work's value, um, would you, affect, in effect, uh, be preventing the author from gaining from his work if you quoted the whole thing so that nobody would then buy his work? And, and this is where I'm going to jump back to our no here again really quick. Um, because the other thing I've seen in a lot of discussions with people who aren't aware of these issues is, well, I'm not selling it, therefore it's fair use. No. Yeah. 
no one of those four things is going to necessarily make something fair use. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the big deal really is the transformativeness if you have changed the character of the work. It's also, for instance, um, if you quote from a book while you're writing a book review or you're doing a book talk, you're probably fine. Mm -hmm. um, if you read several lines from a poem, you're probably fine. If you take that poem and you set it to music, that probably isn't transformative. But if you took a few lines of it and included it with more work and set it to music, that might be okay. Because that is transformative. You have genuinely changed the nature of it. Mm -hmm. What, one of the things Sorry. we want to stress here, she's apologizing because basically we've just given you absolutely no answers. Um, because ultimately the only way to permanently decide if something is fair use is to do it, get sued, and win in a court. And yeah. unfortunately most people are afraid to do that. Um, the, the issue I have, and we're getting into some uh, opinion here and, and kind of yeah. uh, point of view, but is recently I saw one of these infographics that was kind of a flow chart of can I use it or not. Yeah. And the order of the flow chart I thought was kind of wrong. It, it, it got into it and it like, is it in copyright? Yes. Okay. Can you get permission of the creator? If yes, then you're good. If no, then consider fair use. Actually, to me, that is backwards. I would say consider it, consider whether or not your use is fair use first. If you think no, then try to get permission. Now that being said, determining whether it's fair use can be difficult. But I tend to be a little more of a, I'm being reasonable, I am aware of the issues, I have made a good faith effort to say yes, I'm doing a transformation, no, I'm not taking too much of it, no, I'm not selling it, that is a consideration, the nature of the original work, and then kind of in my good faith judgment, I've said this is fair use. And to be honest, I'm not all that worried about people suing me for what I put on my blog. If nothing else, I'll happily take it down if they decide they want to threaten to sue me. Okay. So I, I think we need to maybe try to convince people to not be as fearful of fair use. Now that being said, the last bullet point there that I put in parentheses, because this isn't technically fair use as an issue, but it's something you want to consider, is that's Creative Commons license. If so, we, some people put their stuff up and say, hey, um, I want to allow you to reuse this even though I have a copyright on it. And we will switch real quickly over here to the Google image search is what we're bringing up in this issue. If I search on the word library, and maybe not everybody knows this, okay, here are a bunch of images. And, you know, this first one might be great, and that one's from Wikipedia, so actually it would be okay to use. Uh, but this one here is from glenbrook225.org. It's probably a school. Can I use it or can I? I don't know, but I'm going to assume it's under copyright. If I really don't want to get into the judgment over fair use, if I go up to search tools, select usage rights, and say just give me results that are labeled for reuse, things that people have said you are allowed to reuse this, I can now look at these results and say, hey, these are results I can use, and you'll see a lot of them are from Wikipedia, which is mostly Creative Commons licensed content. And this is not a, uh, we didn't mean to encourage, you, well we do actually mean to encourage you to think about when you put photographs on the web, go ahead and put a Creative Commons license on it if you don't mind somebody reusing it. Be sure that you are the person that has the right to do that. And but, you know, help people out. Right. You know, if you have a, a, a picture of your library that would illustrate, you know, something about library programming, why not let people use the, use the photo? Yep. Um, if it's not something that you are making money for for yourself, like it's not your profession, then yeah. Like, yeah. Yep. We do have one comment yeah, that came me, in right after okay. Laura was... Before we went on to when Laura was doing her description of fair use. Uh -huh. No, no, it's okay. Someone said that is possibly the best description of determining fair use I've come across. Oh, so, well, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. Um, I'll also, oh, by the way, fair use is, if you want to look at the code, it's in Title 17 of the U.S. Code, Section 107. 
So, and I'll throw in if you are uh, wanting to look for a little more on Creative Commons, uh, I know there's at least one presentation in the Encompass Live archive, which is a little, it's not all that recent. I think I did do it at least once. Uh, it might be a couple years old, but it's still accurate. Yeah. So you can, you can go for that. Okay, next scenario. Uh, if you use an image or quotation or clip, do you have to cite the source or give credit? A, yes, if you give attribution, then you can use it. B, yes, this is a matter of good scholarship and librarianship, not of copyright. Or C, maybe if you're using the material under a Creative Commons license. So go ahead and type in A, B, or C into the Q&A there, and let's see what some sort of numbers uh, we can come up with. We don't, we don't need an accurate count, just kind of a rough idea here. We're, we're putting Krista to extra work here now. She's doing Admiral's work. Hmm. Hmm. All right. What do we What do we, we got? Here, uh, at first we have a whole mixture A B C. Now we seem to have a little a battle between B and C. Okay. All right. So some A's, but kind of a half and half B and C yeah. of what's around. Okay. Um, so Laura, how do we want to answer this question? Resoundingly B. <laughs> You are not good librarians if you are not citing your sources. Good librarians always, always, always cite their sources. Okay. I feel very strong about this. You think? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So here's where we're going to go with this. Really, it's not A. Okay. Just giving attribution does not give you a right to use something. No, it does not. Okay. B. Yeah, you should anyways, regardless of anything else. We're yeah. librarians. We cite our sources, okay? Uh, and I'm just going to throw in here citation needed. Um, we'll, <laughs> go, we'll go from there. Uh, if you get the joke right, if not, don't worry about it. C is also an acceptable answer because most Creative Commons licenses, as part of the license, say you need to cite your source. So, for example, I'm using this image from Wiki Wikipedia. This, this content is licensed under Creative Commons, and so I have cited my source down there at the bottom of the slide. Yeah. Yeah. So, and our camera view is kind of covering that up. We apologize. It is in the slides. Yeah. So we have given uh, what would be considered proper citation. So giving citation does not automatically clear you of it being okay. Yes, you should cite sources because you are a good librarian. C, you may be required based on certain licenses to provide a citation anyway. And if you don't, not only are you being a bad librarian in Laura's eyes, you are actually violating the license under which you are reusing that content. You know, it's just common, uh, common courtesy. 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 Yep. Don't yeah. just take someone else's thing. And just because you know, oh, I just took it from so-and-so and I know that they don't mind. That's nice. Give them credit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Be a good person. And I've, I've had to call friends on it uh, where they've used a picture of mine in, in a PowerPoint. I just, I always hate to do it, but I do send an email to kind of say, hey, you know, that was CC license. And they're like, oh, I mean, everybody's always been really apologetic. Go, I'm sorry. I totally missed it. I will update my slides for, you know, the online version and things like that. And we do have one question mm -hmm. regarding this. And I think it's going to be in the A depends. Can you address all of the sharing? And I say quotes because they quoted it in their thing here, sharing on Facebook and how legal that is or is not. This now, I answer, uh, yeah. I, my thought on that is, well, it depends on how you're sharing it. Many of the things that people share are actually, you're sharing a link to something. And right there, you've cited, here's where I got it from. When someone sees what you've shared, you click on it, and poof, it brings you to where you got it from. Right there, you've yeah. Yeah. sent them back to where you found this it, out. So that, you've kind of covered it. it. But there's lots of things where people share pictures and stuff where they just take it, put it in their photos, and put it up there, and there's no link to anything but your own photos. Yeah, it, it's, this is, Facebook is where usually I get the, well, it was online. I found it online, therefore I could share it. And it's like, eh, it, it's kind of iffy. I know I... I I don't know if Facebook has this feature, but I know Google Plus has a feature where you can post something into your Google Plus feed and then disallow sharing. Uh, I don't think Facebook has that. Although you can, like, it was only shared with friends, and if somebody right. tries to share it outside of the friends, it, it's, well, if it's online, don't take it and say it's mine and reshare it and give yourself credit for it. You can kind of make the argument that if they didn't want it shared, they wouldn't have put it on Facebook, but I'm really hesitant of that argument because they might have only meant to share it with some people. Um, so 
I kind of get back to kind of that good faith due diligence. You know, if 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 gram, you know, if if a friend of yours shared it with a small group of people, that doesn't necessarily mean it would be good for you to share it in, to the well, public. In fact, I'm sorry, that's tacky. <laughs> well, yeah, the good if, faith. If it's, someone it's, else yeah. shared something with you, you really are obligated to ask them if it's okay for you to pass it on before you share it with anyone else. Now, if the local radio station shared a funny, and you want to reshare it because you think it's funny. Uh, it, it, this that is where a, yeah, it might technically be a copyright violation, but well, that was a uh, that was a broadcast, and I think if mm. you give them credit because they broadcast it, there's different ways of sharing on Facebook. Too. Yeah, there's yeah. many times if you just use the little share link, it te it shows where you got it from, even if it wasn't a link somewhere outside of Facebook. The person you got it from, right. it says, says via so and so. So right there, you've also said, hey, that's where I got it from. The thing that comes but oh, and bothers me is when I see something cool, a picture or a, a meme or something, and I'm like, oh, that's neat. I want to find out where that came from. But what the person has done is they've taken that photo and just downloaded it into their own Facebook photos. So there's no link or information showing at all where they got it from originally. That is where I just get annoyed whether it's copyright violation. I'm like, but where did that come from? How do you know that's even true, that little quote you did? Yeah. Or I want to see the real original one because I'm interested yeah. more about what this person wrote, if it's an author or something. It's like chain and of you've evidence. just <laughs> taken it and put it into your own. Well, list. that's, again, yeah. we're talking about being good librarians and citing your sources mm -hmm. so that people can go back and read more about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about good manners, which is you don't pass on something someone's told you unless you have their permission. Right. Okay. Do we have anything okay. else on um, that one? There's some uh, question things that are more about this. Um, oh, we use electronic signs inside our library. So just, you okay. know, that's mm -hmm. the animal. Would fair use apply easier to something that wouldn't be distributed on the Internet? So it's just it's not a thing in our library that only when you walk in you see it up there. Is that... Okay, so I, I'm going to give an opinion, and I would probably say don't worry about it. Cite your sources anyways. Um, technically, might that actually be, I mean, uh, it's not exactly transformative. You aren't affecting the market of the work. Um, it could be parody. We'll kind of get into parody in a little bit, too. See, this is where one of those things where if you ask a lawyer, the lawyer will probably say, yes, that's a copyright violation. Don't do it. But in my mind, there's kind of like, is is there a harm? And you know, if if you got it from a local photographer and you can get a hold of the local photographer, ask the local photographer. If the local photographer says no, don't. Or if they say, hey, you used my photo and I didn't give you permission, take it down. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't necessarily be afraid to do it. Okay. Use common sense. Yeah. Oh, geez. All right. Uh oh. A question about uh -huh. copyright inside of systems like Blackboard. Or e reserve program. Okay, that's an academic area. We are just yeah. not, we, we do not have the knowledge. We're gonna, I'll just admit this right up front. Um, there are all sorts of special circumstances mm -hmm. and CONTU guidelines. We're going to touch on ILL, which kind of gets close to that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I am not comfortable giving any sort of advice in, in that area. There are actual provisions. I mean, you do need, you actually need to go to the code and read what the actual provisions for academic uses are because and I think there are special provisions. ARL has some good documents yes, and guidelines on that too. I would check with it with, with ARL. The Association uh, of the, Research Libraries. Yeah. Okay. Let's, Which I think is in our list of links. Yeah, it should be. If it's yeah. not, we will make sure it is. Okay. So here we go. Next next one. Let's let's have a little more fun with this. Is it legal to read a book out loud at story time? All right. So A, yes of course. It's not like anyone's ever suggested otherwise. B, yes, because it's fair use. C, yes, due to a specific exception in the copyright law. Or D, technically no, since it's an unauthorized public performance. So we're going to assume you didn't contact all the authors that you're reading in story time and ask. Yeah. That's what D would be. So let's give you all a few seconds there to pick one of those. Sensing a theme, Krista? Um, 
all over the board? B and C and a little d. B and C and a little d. B and okay. C equally. Um, someone says but I, B, but I'm totally guessing here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, fair says, enough. Um, B or C. B or sure. C. Yeah. Okay. So as we walk between B and C, right. a few people thinking that it's um, jumping down to D. Okay. So we raised this one because we, Laura and I were having a discussion around another issue as to whether or not something would be considered fair use. And I got, got it in my head. I'm like, well, wouldn't story time be uh, an unauthorized public performance. And I thought, why not? But then I thought, well, but, you know, it's not like anybody's ever sued. Although an author's organization in a foreign country in Europe, we won't mention, has actually suggested that they think it's not, but we're only talking about U.S. law here. Yeah. So I asked some people who know these things, and the correct answer is actually C. Yeah. There is an actual exception in the copyright law, and that is here. Um, I, I've got it in front of me. Make sure I'm looking at the right one here. No, I was looking at the wrong one. Um, section 110, labeled Limitations on Exclusive Rights, Exemption of Certain Performances and Displays. And Section 4 of that says, The performance of a non-dramatic literary or musical work, so not a play, you know, we're talking a, a, a children's storybook, otherwise than in a, tra uh, in a work otherwise than in a transmission to the public without any direct or indirect commercial advantage and without payment of any fee or other compensation for the performance to any of its performers, promoters, and organizers if there is no direct or indirect admission charge. And then there's an or, but we're yeah. going to assume you're not charging for story time. Basically, if you are not charging for story time and you are reading a non-dramatic literary or musical work, you're good. So there is an exception for story time. And little bunny foo foo is saved. Yes. <laughs> so now uh, I do recall that there was a, a like if you were going to then make a recording of it and put it out there, that might be an unauthorized presentation. I know somebody was going to read a story for Audible, I heard, and they ended up reading a generic version of the story because the story was still under copyright. I yeah. won't mention the name of the story. Um, so basically, story time, you're good. There is an exception that covers you in the, copyright, in the copyright law. So fair use isn't even an issue in this situation. But it seems like we have some questions or comments I can yeah. see by Krista's face. <laughs> what if you record the story time and then post it online to, or use it somewhere? That, uh, where, that might be a problem. Yeah. That, 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 what I will say is, is that is not covered by this exception. So that being said, I'm not going to tell you don't do it, but you really need to start considering uh, whether or not uh, you can do that. Now, I know in the past, there might need to be some more research done here. Libraries used to do recorded story time over the telephone. Yeah. Okay. So I think sometimes they still do now. So I'm not, we, we kind of stopped at live story time. <laughs> there, there are exceptions in this particular section. It's Which, section 110. Okay. Section 110. Of yep. Title 17. And it gets very, very specific. Mm. Um, they start talking about uh, the communication occurs has 2,000 or more gross square feet of space and I really it's very very specific so if you want to make uh, recordings or anything I think you really need to delve into this mm -hmm. but if you just want to in the library read a story to the kids you're fine yep okay. um, someone's planning a puppet show you know we, little puppet shows uh -huh. sometimes you have music or use or use a storybook plot I guess that sounds like kind of making up their own um, They're In that case, they would be program. dramatizing the literary work, and you're now just doing story time with puppets. I'm thinking you're okay. I'm thinking you're okay, but Don't I'm, charge. I'm thinking <laughs> if it's actually a play that's in copyright, mm -hmm. you're not okay. Yeah. It doesn't sound like this. Using music or storybook plot sounds like some, they're going to come up with their own kind of thing that's themed. I think Using that's a okay. bit from something. And remember, okay. remember then, yeah. transformative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. If, and it, you know, see, if, if, if you're doing, I'll use, even though Shakespeare's out of copyright, if you're performing Shakespeare, that was written as a dramatic work to be performed. Um, the Hungry Caterpillar was not written as a dramatic work to be performed. It's a story, and if you want to have a guitar player come in and strum some chords along while you do it or show some puppets, you're pretty much okay. Yeah. Now, the moment you charge or the moment you start recording, then you get into weirder scenarios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay.
Because actually the law does go on to say, if you do charge but only to cover expenses, then there's a whole other set of rules. And But we're just going to assume you're not charging for story time. Usually you don't. Yeah. Um, but if you're doing more than just reading the book, you need to look at the law because it does have a lot of really specific things in it. So you need to really just take a look at it, okay? Yep. And I've done a link to the Copyright Office um, of the entire text of the law, so you'll yeah. be able to get to yeah. that. Um, There's one more on this topic? Well, um, and I'm not sure, are you going to go into um, when libraries show movies? Yes. Yes, okay. we are. Yeah. <laughs> Enough then, okay. We'll, we'll hold off on yeah. that one. Okay. And then the other, other thing that was from came up earlier, which I think this, because we have this photo up here right now, someone wanted to know, back when you're talking about fair use, what about pictures from Flickr? And I think the answer for that is to make, well, here you can see we cited it. Right. And within Flickr, people can decide on the copyright level of their photos. Yeah, so just like. Just look and see, mm -hmm. does it say it's free for anyone to use? Does it say reserve, reserve mm -hmm. or not? Does it say they do have lunch? You can make it a cop or a. You can right. have commons license if you want to. So just look at the photo you want to use and see what that person has decided to license their photo as and just follow it. Just as Google had a search where you can right, limit Flickr your search to only things you can reuse, Flickr does too. It's the advanced search under yeah, Flickr. And you can search. limit to, you know, reusable photos. And yeah. I use that all the time. That's how I found this photo. Yeah. All right. All right. We have to go on now. Yes. Okay. <sighs> A patron told you she's taking home CDs, making copies, and returning them. What should you do? A, nothing, it's none of my business. <laughs> B, sit them down and have a little chat about copyright, then let it go. Or C, have that chat, and if they keep doing it, cut them off. <laughs> Give everybody a little time. This, this one's a little less clear, maybe. Looks like we're, um, oh, interesting. <laughs> well, there's some comments. Uh-huh, sure. Um, mostly we're going between B and C. Okay. We have about both, a little of both, and then a few for A. Okay. Um, and then some specific comments. Um, a is what I do in reality. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what that means, what you think you should do. And you're probably supposed to do B, but we usually do A. Okay. Um, it's just as, you know, an awesome right. comment, yeah. Um, so, is the patron violating copyright? Yes. Is it your responsibility? Now, let's keep in mind we're generally talking public libraries who do not have an educational mandate. Okay, so those of you who, who are in academics or schools might have a different answer. But, and, and I, I think Laura and I are in agreement with this, we're going with A. Um, you know, it, it, Krista kind of stuck her fingers in here and went, la, 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 la. And it sounds like some people are basically doing the same thing, going, well, that's what we do, but maybe we should do something else. No, that's what you should do. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, now, if they're doing it in the library, maybe there's another situation. Maybe you want to say, you know, look, really, don't be doing that in the library. Um, but if, if, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitating here because there is no, like, in the copyright law it says that the library must stop people from violating yeah. copyright. Yes, we have photocopiers and we generally have that sign up that says, hey, you might be violating Make copyright. Sure not. Yeah. But and if you don't have that sign up, put it up. It's then the patron's responsibility yeah. to, to follow the law. Um, now, I've heard Carter arguments is like, well, if they're breaking the law by like beating the heck out of somebody in the library, we call the cops. Okay, fine. Uh, there's some immediate harm there, and yes, there are things we tell people not to do that are against the law. But when it comes to copyright, if nothing else, even I, with all I know about copyright, would not necessarily have the comfort level to sit down with an individual patron and try to explain to them under the copyright law why what they're doing is wrong. And some people, some comments here actually mm -hmm. do that too, saying, unless, do you even have proof that they're really doing it? They could be just spouting off and saying they are and they're not. <laughs> Well, well, that's why I wrote the question is they told so you they're doing it. They because told you, but they may be just joking and saying, yeah, I'm just making copies of all your stuff. <laughs> well, do you know that they are? Right. It oh, may good also, point. It, and I think it may, I mean, you said, hey, just do nothing and let it, you know, that's up to them. And that's true. But I would think depending <sighs> on the patron, who you know, if, how you know them, mm -hmm. it may be a chance for um, a learning, uh, a teaching moment. 
to just if, if it's someone who you feel comfortable with saying um you do know that that's a legal right here's some info go on your way you know because it is our responsibility sure. to educate them as well as what things that they can do but no it's not your responsibility to make sure they stop and say oh i can't give this to you now because you're doing that but you can you know depending on who it is in the situation right you'll know, feel it out you know your patrons you know you're not really supposed to do that you're breaking copyright yeah so be C though really makes me nervous in in mm -hmm. the library judging that what people are doing yeah, with the material true. when they get home and then cutting them off is it's just a, our, isn't it our responsibility to inform them about copyright like you say have mm -hmm. the signs up that say there's copyright it, law it is no. it is but our responsibility their decision to follow it or not right. it is our responsibility to have a sign up that says you know <laughs> making copies may or may not be legal be someone says one of my patrons claimed that as a taxpayer he is part owner of the CDs so <laughs> That's creative. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's not go we there. We don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Really, you don't want to know. Yeah. All right. Next one. May the library use one of the director's monthly newspaper columns in our library newsletter. So the scenario is public library director writes a monthly column about what's going on with the library, uh, and can we reprint that on the website for the library? So A, yes, as long as the library's director is okay with it. Uh, no, the newspaper owns the copyright, and the library may not use the material without permission. Or C, maybe, what does the contract say? So A, B, or C. Basically, we got a yes, no, or a maybe here. Yeah, we're all about the C. We're all about, okay, fine. Let's just go about that. Yes, it is all about the C. Um, a few A's and B's tossed in, but we're... Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the contract. Um, you, the director is doing work for hire, uh, potentially. No, let's assume there is a contract, okay? Really, at some point, you know, maybe it's, we got a lot of small towns here in Nebraska. There may just be, hey, director, send us this. Well, if there's no official contract, get something in writing that says, Something you know, writing. you Talk can, the who owns the copyright? Say, hey, when I'm doing this, I'm also going to be doing mm -hmm. this. Is that cool? Or let's make an agreement that... I can yes. raise them for you. Right. I can also you, put it in our own stuff as well. You want an agreement, um, and, and this has to do with who owns, who has the copyright if you're doing work for hire. And generally, it's the person who's paying who has the copyright. Although that can be negotiated. But you, <laughs> but you can negotiate it. Yep. And this is why if you get someone to do work for you, you should have a little agreement with them about who owns the copyrights for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, my, my last book contract, it said by default when they sent it to me that the publisher would be listed as the copyright owner. And I kind of wrote back, went, you know, I'd rather it be me and my co-author. Can we do that? And they went, okay. Now, according to the contract, they still have the rights to publish it. Yeah. And I can't just, you know, set it free on the Internet and things like that. But, you know, the copyright is mine. But the contract goes on to then say, who can do what? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just... just uh, even if, if you don't have an official contract, small town, send an email to whoever you send it into. Say, hey, is the newspaper cool with me doing this? Even if you don't want to get into who owns the copyright, just just get an okay. And then if it ever becomes a problem, you've got, hey, we've got this agreement here yeah. that says so. So What you want is to avoid a problem. Yep. So any further? No, no comments there. Okay, everybody liked that one. All right. <laughs> if my library requests a photocopy of a magazine article through interlibrary loan, may we request another article from the same issue again in six months? So we're getting a little complicated here. Yes, no, or maybe how many have you already requested? This is where I want to like call Linda. Our, we actually we, we consulted with Linda, our ILL person for yes, the state of Nebraska here on this one. We're going for C here. We're, we're going for C. A is tossed in. Okay. Yeah. The answer is C. Uh, and there's our cat picture. We gotta we had to have a cat picture in there. Uh, Laura, you want to take this one? Okay. You, you um, <laughs> the interlibrary loan guidelines are the are from Contu. So remember we talked about the Constitution, the U.S. Code, and Contu. Contu is the one that has the interlibrary loan guidelines and they say that you can request in a calendar year you can request two articles from an issue of a journal so if you've only requested one you back to your question if you've only requested one that year yes you can request another one if you've requested the photocopy but you requested four more before that then no you can't you shouldn't have requested those four um, so it depends on how many you've gotten. You also can get 
there are some very specific numbers and guidelines that um, the interlibrary loan people kind of conform to. And again, this does not really have the force of law, but this is it's a workable guideline because you got to have something. The deal is that it's the people who ask the requester who has to keep track of how many times they have requested. The lender can lend as much as they like. So if you're requesting photocopies, you need to keep track of how many, when you requested them from what magazines and even from what issue of the magazine. Um, Comment, question. Yes. If you're willing to pay copyright fees, yes, then you can request. Then you can request more, and you can go to the copyright clearance yeah, this center. Is the or this is how many you can do without for having free. to pay copyright right. yeah. for free. If you choose to pay the fees and go through that way, then you can do whatever you want. So That's a good paying. comment. Thank yeah. you. But again, it's the requester who is responsible for tracking that and paying it, not the lender. Right. So if you see um, someone asking you for the issue articles over and over again for the same issue. Keep sending because it's not your responsibility right. to keep to, to make sure that they 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 may be doing everything properly on their side, paying the copyright fees, doing whatever they need to do mm -hmm. um, on their side. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. So maybe Captain Karen Schneider took that picture. So. That's nice. Okay. May we use a copy of the book cover to put on a flyer for our book club? We will also throw in here maybe in the catalog or on the website. Yeah. A, no, not without specific permission. B, yes, this falls within the doctrines of fair use. Or C, yes, this is a useful article. <laughs> Laura had the roughest time with this one, and we, we may I have did. a slight disagreement. But I I'll, did. So I'll start when we get to the answer, and then if you want to. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so let's see what sort of. Uh, B. B. Okay. Everyone's saying B. Okay. Except for a few C. And a few C and a few A. Mostly okay. B. All right. Um, I, this is a rhetorical question, but okay. If if you answered A, let me, my follow-up question to you would be: uh, who, From whom would you get permission? Would it be the artist, the author, the publisher, the uh, uh, okay? Um, so, really, it's not A. Okay. Yeah. It's also not A because the the example I like to give is just if you read Publishers Weekly. Publishers Weekly, I, I have not confirmed this with them, but I, I'm I'm educated assumption here that they do not ask every single publisher or author of any book they've ever reviewed whether or not they can include a, an image of the dust jacket with the review. I, I can't see every possible magazine ever doing that. Okay. No. So, in fact, here's my example from a, a Publishers Weekly. I don't think they contacted those publishers. In fact, they had a section that was reviews of self-published content. I don't think they contacted those hundreds of authors directly to do it. My answer is C. There is a small section of the U.S. Code, Section 113, uh, mm -hmm. that is labeled Scope of Exclusive Rights in Pictorial, Graphic, and Sculptural Works. And it says, in the case of a work lawfully reproduced in useful articles that have been offered for sale or other distribution to the public, so the book has been offered for sale to the general public, copyright does not include any right to prevent the making, distribution, or display of pictures or photographs of such articles in connection with advertisements or commentaries related to the distribution or display of such articles or in connection with news reports. So the book has been put up for sale. You can take a picture of it. Or other, or photograph of it, scan whatever of the item itself, because you are reviewing it, or advertising it for the fact that you have it in your collection. So, as far as I'm concerned, if I write a review on my blog, I can use an image of that book because the book's been up is for sale to the general public, and I am reviewing it. Uh, I say you can use this to cover your catalog. Okay. Now I will throw in one other thing here. Some of you may be paying a service to provide those images for you. You're not actually paying for permission to use those images. You're using, you're paying for the service to supply you with those images. Okay. So library thing charges libraries to get images from them, but it's because you're using their server to get those images from them, or you're using Amazon service to get those images, but nothing would stop you from taking a picture of 
the book that just came in or scanning it or in your hand. yeah you're I mean you can use these images because you are doing an advertisement or commentary on the item itself. Can you say again what where this is? is the this US is code? U, 17 U.S. Code section 113. Mm -hmm. um, 113C. C. Yes, 113C. Okay. Um, so, and this was again pointed to me by somebody when I asked the question, and they're like, "I'm a copyright person. It's covered here." Okay. Laura, have I convinced you? You were kind of a little iffy on this one this morning. Um, well, when they define useful article, um, I, I, you know, I tried diagramming the sentence just to see if I could make sense out of it, and I, and I didn't. I was not successful. Um, they say a useful article is an article having an intrinsic utilitarian function that is not merely to portray the appearance of the article or to convey information. So now, if anyone else can parse that sentence, let me know. I, w I would argue that the fact that you're advertising it or reviewing it is the, util is the hey, utility. So I'm, I'm not actually arguing <laughs> that you shouldn't use the book covers. I, in fact, think you should use the book covers in your, um, in your catalog. I think they enhance the catalog. I think they um, are a positive thing about the book. I can't imagine somebody objecting. Uh, to well, your essentially system advertising systems. your book. Have that built in. That yeah. As a, yeah. As a feature. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so mm -hmm. I would say go ahead. I'm just saying that I didn't quite understand this law. Fair enough. <laughs> Questions or comments? No. Okay. Yeah, we're we're going to keep, we're going we're gonna to truck along here. May we enlarge one of the illustrations from a book and paint it on the wall of the children's room as a mural? A, no, that's stealing. B, yes, fair use. C, Maybe if the illustration is old enough to be out of copyright. Or you could get permission. Yeah, we could probably have a, a D, get permission there. Yeah. Contact them to get permission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to all say C is the answer. Okay, yeah, what pretty much. Um, now, <laughs> there, there, there are exceptions, okay, which we, we've kind of barely touched upon. But, yeah, um, it, Maybe is the okay. If it's out of copyright, yeah, you're golden. So that is the best answer out of our choices here. Okay, and okay. this brings up what is in the public domain. Yeah, um, and that's complicated too, of course. Um, basically, anything published before 1923 is in the public domain. After that, the answer is it depends. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the, um, that's pretty much what we can guarantee. And then, uh, depending on when the laws changed the copyright. Copyright today is the life of the author plus 70 years. So it's like a very long time. Unless the author's a corporation, then it gets weirder. Yeah, it does so get weirder. There's, yeah, we're, we're trying not to do that flow chart here because that yeah. would be nasty. Now, a couple of examples though, okay, I want to bring up parody here and I, I, I this I stumbled across. If you painted the mural of the Disney princesses kind of as they are up on the wall, yeah, you're going to have a problem. Okay, but this person who did all of the Disney princesses as Orange is the New Black characters, that's parody. Yeah. They're, 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 Disney may not like it, but they're pretty much covered under, kind of a, it's not technically fair use, it's parody. Because yeah. it is transformative, it's, it's, it's uh, not necessarily affecting the market, but, all those things we But if about. you got sued for it, a judge may or may not decide that it is. And Disney's got more money than you. Yeah. Now, the interesting one over there on the right, Harold and the Purple Crayon, I just want to bring this up. This is hanging at the local community college out in public, and you, you can't read the, the, the banner underneath the banner, but it's, it's basically like a, a, an elementary school art class. That is a copyright violation. Now, I hope that whoever the, the author of Harold and the Purple Crayon or the illustrator would not sue a bunch of fourth graders, um, but yeah, just if you put that up on the library wall or if you... If you hung that in the library, the library would probably be okay. But if you had that painted onto the wall of the library, yeah, probably that would be well, bad. Except I, I don't I, know how old Harold is. Well, if, if unless old. Harold's out of copyright, mm -hmm. that is possible. Um, and it's also is it transformative enough? Yeah, I, I would probably argue against this. One. I I don't know that it is or not, mm -hmm. but that's where you have to go. And it's, then you discovered Eric Carl says. If you go to Eric Carl's website, 
Um, he'll tell you if you want to make a mural to please send him the plans and he'll okay them or not. Yeah, so, so if you can check, if you, you can check with the author. Yeah. yeah, you might be able to check and you might be fine. Right. Um, so it, it, again, you know, it depends. It depends. <laughs> and it, I'm sure some of these authors would be happy to talk to you about it. Many of them are um, big supporters, supporters of libraries and schools. And if you say, hey, we want to do this good thing, uh, many of them will say, oh, that's so cool, yes. Or they'll say, like him, let me see what you're going to do so I can say if I think it's okay yeah. or not. But they're not outright. So if you're doing a zombie know. caterpillar, maybe he'll say no. So you, <laughs> you just, people are saying Harold was published in 1955. Okay, so we, so. so there's a good chance Harold is still in copyright because yeah. the rules in 55 were different than now. So we'll go with that. Okay, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna move on here because we are we are definitely running long. Okay, I just want to let yep. everyone know. Yes, we we have reached our hour officially for Encompass Live. We usually go 10 to 11 a.m. Central Time, but. We are going to keep going until we're done with the slides. And we got like two, two or three more questions. Yeah. We're, we're wrapping it up here. Okay, here's the movies one. Somebody asked about the, li the, libra may the, libra the library may show a movie at a library program. That's vaguely poorly phrased. Apologize. Yes, no, or maybe. May the library show a movie at a library program. There we go. That, that might be a bit of better way to do it. We're uh, going to say C is the answer, except for someone put in their own answer of D, uh, damned if I know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's why you're here. Okay, the answer is uh, C, maybe, and we just we got the MPAA logo in there. Um, so, Laura, you want to cover this? This is actually okay. your department. In Nebraska, um, the Nebraska Library Commission actually pays a service um, for licensing uh, permission to show particular movies in in the library. So it is a very long list. That, that it is a long list. Mm -hmm. um, there are particular um, things you can and can't do. Uh, you have to do it in the library, for instance. You can't show it on the outside of the library. You can't show it in the town hall. It has to be in the library. Um, there are some other requirements, and this is on our website if you need to look at it. But public libraries do have, oh, and you can't charge, you cannot charge admission fees. Uh, you could sell popcorn. <laughs> so, uh, there are also restrictions, someone asked about this, about the advertising. Yes, about there are. How it, you, it, how it, under it, our there, license, yes. Under our license. Now, remember, licenses are uh, essentially contracts, so they mm -hmm. are negotiated. But this is a license that we pay for for all of the libraries so they all can be legal. And so show movies. Do it. It's going to be cool. <laughs> but don't but just pull a DVD me. off your yeah. shelf and, you know. Oh, that's the other it. thing. You don't have to own the movie. You could borrow the movie from your brother-in-law, and that would be fine as long, uh, as, long as it's on the list. And the advertising people are saying is you can you can't mention the name of the movie yeah. outside of the library. Yes. Yeah. On advertising within the library building, you can, which also means you can't on your website say, "We're showing Frozen tonight at six, at seven p.m." Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can say that in the library, but not on your website. Which, which if Frozen is on the list, which we're not completely there, oh, sure. Yeah, right. yeah, when, to which there is a church by where I park every single day. And they are showing Frozen in a week That's outside, it, yeah. and and I I almost want to knock on the door and say you know did you pay the I but I don't want to give them a hard time I don't know it, but I really wonder are they just doing it but they've got a sign in the churchyard saying Frozen in Thursday this night. In particular case, I would I have been part, I've seen this for years yeah. there too. I think this church has got has paid for because I would hope a regular, so. Regular monthly movie that they show us is a neighborhood in the event. summer. Yeah. They professionally made signs made put up that they post around the the, the neighborhood yeah. saying. Um, what the movie's going to be that month. So I think it's something they... Okay, so but for, for public libraries showing yeah. movies, you have to have permission. Mm -hmm. There are, again, exceptions about showing movies in classrooms, mm -hmm. and you want to get into the law if that is the situation. Mm -hmm. This is simply the situation of a public library showing a movie. There are particular restrictions they have to abide by. And in Nebraska, you can look on the Nebraska Library Commission website to see and call Sally Snyder if you have any questions. <laughs> And I would say if you're in another state and you're not sure, contact your state library. Yeah. Now, they may not do exactly what we do, but they should know who you need to talk to. So yeah. now you just say they do this in Kentucky. Um, okay. And in Kansas, they use something called um, Movie Licensing USA. Yeah, okay. that's, well, that's, that's so what I'm we So I'm going to put a link to that in here as well. And there's yeah. licensing for um, a K-12 school, I just brought the site, and licensing for a public library. Okay. Yeah. So you can decide. Right. Yeah. And then another comment someone just says is it's a church. They may be exempt from everything. And I don't, uh, know. I don't know. I don't think for 
Rosen's religious. We're, 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 we're talking the MPAA here. They yeah, Disney, yeah. that they might be. So uh, maybe. I, I'm not saying no, but I, I would be skeptical of them being exempt. Okay. This is, I think, our last one. Okay. All right. So, because uh, this is, this is, I get, I get up, uptight about certain things, and Laura gets uptight about this one. So. Well, <laughs> you need to understand this because I think there are some um, misapprehensions. Um, uh, let's just say, cut to the chase and say, the answer is all of the above. <laughs> um, so, for the purpose of the recording, what yeah. is the difference between copyright and a trademark? A copyright is automatic. As soon as you create a work, it is essentially copyrighted. A trademark you have to apply for. The U.S. Copyright Office is part of the Library of Congress. That's where you go to get, and there's a big, nice website there. It's uh, www.copyright.gov. Um, the trade for a trademark, that's part of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. So we have three different kinds of intellectual property, copyright, patents, and trademarks. Um, copyright protection is yours by right. You just get a copyright, and it's you have the copyright as long as the copyright lasts. A trademark has to be defended. Um, if somebody is, that's what the poor Kleenex people, you'll never hear a, a, an advertisement for Kleenex that just says it's Kleenex. They always say it's Kleenex tissues because Kleenex is a trademark. And if they don't protect, if they don't defend it, it can move into um, general use. That's what happened to aspirin. aspirin. Yep. That's what happened to cellophane. Um, they weren't defended, and so they moved into general language. So a trademark has to be defended. So if you used, for instance, a trademarked, say some little um, cartoon figure was trademarked, and you used that trademark, they'd have to go after you for it. So don't do that. Um, and um, yeah, copyright is just you know kind of blanket with these few like fair use exceptions. Trademarks are only good within certain categories. So you can have a brand of tire and a frozen dinner that both use the same name. I don't know why they would, but you could do that because they're in different categories. Um, so trademark is a, is just. A look. But um, you also trademark, it doesn't have to be exact, it just has to sound like it or be very similar to it to not be allowed. Trademark is a whole different thing. Yeah. We're talking about copyright here, but I just want you to understand that they are two different things and be careful of using trademark stuff because they have to go after you if you're um, you, an unauthorized use of a trademark, whereas with copyright there are fair use and some other exceptions. And and if somebody doesn't sue you for copyright infringement, they don't lose their copyright. Yeah, but with trademark they do. They, so they can lose their trademark if they don't sue you. Um, but this is kind of you know uh, this is the whole thing about Mickey Mouse. He's copyrighted not yep. a trademark. Mm -hmm. um, not the any questions on this topic? Because you had that one other one that was. No. Okay, so what was that other question? Yep. Oh, someone wants to know how, and I, I know you're, how do I get a Creative Commons license? Okay, there are several ways. Um, for example, if you upload something to Flickr, um, part of the upload is I want to set a license on this. Well, I think actually I want to um, back up before you say yes. about that kind of thing. Um, the question says, how do I get one? Where What I'm getting the impression from this person is they think they need to apply to get a license to license something. Like, like right, to get okay. a trademark, to get a copyright, right. you have to apply yes, you and do. say, I've done this. Creative Commons is actually the exact opposite of yes. that. You do not have to apply to have someone approve you for it. You just say you're doing it. Yeah. You say, you, I, am a, I am the one who says, and I am putting this. It's one of those, It's would open source be a... It is, it, is, it is an open source, it is an open source licensing scheme, right. scheme, you scheme for lack of You want to do Creative Life right. Commons and you want to apply that to your work that you have put out there. You don't have to ask them for it. They just put this out there for everyone to use and you just, if you have something you have created and you want to license it in one of their many ways, right. you just say, I'm doing this. Right. And then link to their now, if, if, you, if you have the right to share. So you have to have the copyright before right. you can put a Creative Commons on it. Like I take my own photos and put them into my own Flickr account, and I decide what kind of Creative Commons license. Yeah. She says yes. So you just claim it for your item. Yep, you do. Yeah. 
Yep. You just do it. It's all up to you as the actual owner of the um, yeah. item itself. Did you write this story yourself and you want to create a conflict? Did you take this photo yourself? It's not someone else's. Right. And I'm, yep. I'm just going to interject here. Um, the person who did the image on the screen right now, the CC, we know her. She's a friend of ours. She's here in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's Karen's. Look at over here on the left. Oh, yeah. Wow, we know Karen. Karen's She's been on the show. University of Nebraska, Lincoln. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, just a little more. If you want more information on what options are available for Creative Commons, so. go to creativecommons.org. There is license. How can I license my work? It will. There, there's a process if you want help in deciding what kind of license you want to use and if you want to get some like HTML code to put into your website, things like that. But you can just decide, I want this kind of license, and then state it right. with There's the content. There's no office or department that you have to apply to to get Correct. a Creative Commons license, yeah. like with copyright and trademark. It's not anything like that at all. Um, it's not run by anything in the government. It's actually, it was just um, It is a non-profit organization. By it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a way to share. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Um, okay. okay, that actually wasn't the screen I wanted. Um, so, yes, that was our last question. Um, there are, there will be uh, a show specific um, links in the show notes uh, that will go out. Uh, that you are, that delicious URL there is just to kind of the commissions copyright resources links uh, that that mm -hmm. are already available, and we will add some of these also. And in this case, like you see right here, we've just put, whoops, back up, CC by NC, which means we put a Creative Commons license on this. Please do reuse it non-commercially and give us credit. So that is an example of Creative Commons license. Yep, um, we've just you done it. Put on your stuff. Yep, uh, we will happily take uh, any other questions via email or whatnot. Uh, we'll do our best to provide you with our opinion, if nothing else, because it can't be legal advice. Um, what Laura and I also suggested, we'll, then we'll wrap up. See if there are any other questions there. Um, if you have scenarios that you would like to see used in a future edition of a presentation such as this, send them in. At the moment, we have not scheduled a future session. Um, it will kind of depend on what suggestions and what sort of feedback we get from this one, uh, but we are kind of willing to consider doing another one. Uh, hopefully the polling software will work next time. Um, so if you've got just like, hey, this would be a great scenario for another uh, session like this, send it in. We'll, we'll keep track of those and we'll see if maybe we can do uh, another one of these in the future because it seemed like it was a topic that people were interested in. We had a lot of sign-ups. On the other hand, you know, if it gets too hard for us, maybe we'll see if we can find somebody who knows. <laughs> a little more. But I, I, the last thing I want to say is just don't be afraid to reuse stuff um, as much yeah. as whenever somebody asks a question, I see the answer, well, I'm not selling it, so it's okay. That drives me insane. I am equally insane when somebody says, by default, ask a lawyer or get permission. Because yeah. you don't always have to do that. Don't be afraid. Just be educated and, you know, put a good faith effort into what you're considering. Um, are there any other outstanding questions that you think we might need to address before we wrap up? We have ideas for your next one. Ideas for the next one. Okay, oh, we'll, we'll pull them from there we'll or send there. us an email. Everything um, that you're typing into the questions section, just so you know here, does get captured afterwards in a spreadsheet that I can spit out from our GoToWebinar um, interface. So um, keep typing away and we'll, uh, I'll yep. give it to these guys. We'll take a look. <laughs> um, we, we hope that we kind of had fun with this. Yeah. Um, it, it did get more complicated than we thought it was going to be when we started. <laughs> but, um, you know, we hope that uh, it was good for you, too. Yeah, well, we didn't get into any debates on the show with a copyright lawyer. So no, we that, did not. That, that's a that good was sign. Good. Either they didn't come into the show or they didn't decide to say anything. Or, or, or we're vaguely right. Okay, so that's good. Oh. All right. Okay, so um, thank you, everybody. And we'll, we'll hand it back to Krista to wrap up. Um, pop over to the sure. Firefox and then... Yeah, that's it. All right, so thank you very much for um, attending our Encompass Live this week. Um, it has been, is being recorded, so it will be available later today, maybe, um, uh, for your um, viewing again, or you can share it with your um, colleagues if they weren't able to join us today. Um, this is our Encompass Live website. As I said, we have our live shows here and our archive shows that are available and free for anyone to watch, so please do go here, and this is where the archive will be of this show. Um, and I hope you join us next week when our topic is Engaging Writers with a Community Novel Project. This is something that the um, library in Topeka and um, 
Shawnee County Public Library did this community novel project where members of the public wrote a book online. Actually, they've done it two, maybe three times. I can't remember. Wait, now. I wonder who has the copyright on that. You'll have to ask. Why is what So, um, Alyssa and Miranda, Miranda from Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library will be on the line with us next week to talk about their community novel project. Um, and if you are a Facebook user, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so do please like us there, and you will get notifications of when new shows are coming up, when recordings are available, when the show is starting. Here's the one that I just posted up this morning saying, pop in right now and join us. Um, other than that, any last minute things? I think we're just going to let thank you, thank yous. All right. So thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next time and on future episodes of Encompass Live. Bye. Bye. Bye.